trusted advisor has announced he's resigning. The move that, uh, that was made by Staff Secretary Rob Porter comes after his two ex-wives came forward with graphic stories and in one case photos of domestic abuse. NBC News White House correspondent Kristen Welker has the details. Shockwaves at the White House after one of the president's most trusted advisors, Rob Porter, resigned amid allegations by two ex-wives of verbal and physical abuse. Porter sits outside the Oval Office and controls all the documents that land on the president's desk. In a statement, Porter called the claims outrageous and simply false and a coordinated smear campaign. The president and chief of staff have had full confidence and trust in his abilities and his performance. Overnight, chief of staff John Kelly called Porter a man of integrity, even as the reports of abuse by Porter first appeared in the Daily Mail, including this picture of Porter's first ex-wife, Colby Holderness, who told the paper Porter punched her, giving her this black eye soon after their 2003 marriage. Holderness also alleges Porter choked her and emotionally abused her. Porter firing back. I took the photos given to the media nearly 15 years ago, and the reality behind them is nowhere close to what is being described. Porter's second ex-wife, Jennifer Willoughby, told the Daily Mail, Porter dragged her wet and naked out of the shower and was verbally abusive, an account she confirms to NBC News. NBC News has also obtained a 2010 protective order, where Willoughby told police during their separation, Porter ignored her multiple requests to leave her home and at one point punched in the glass on the door. I called the police afraid that he would break in, she said. Mounting questions about how Porter was given such close access to the president and the documents that crossed his desk. A former White House official says Chief of Staff John Kelly was aware of the allegations of abuse before the story broke. Two sources familiar with the matter tell NBC News it is believed Porter was never given full security clearance, although it's not clear why. The administration now on defense. I think that was a personal decision that Rob made uh, and one that he was not pressured to do, but one that he made on his own. And last night, Chief of Staff John Kelly released a second statement. His updated response reads in part, I was shocked by the new allegations released today against Rob Porter. There is no place for domestic violence in our society. I stand by my previous comments of Rob Porter that I've come to know since becoming Chief of Staff and believe every individual deserves the right to defend their reputation. Joe, it, this week, it, and I, I've raised it a few times it, begrudgingly because we obviously have such tremendous respect for John Kelly, but what's going on in there? That's a great question, and that's a question to ask Bob Costa. Bob, obviously General Kelly uh, coming under pressure from Donald Trump. Apparently, I think I read somewhere Ivanka Trump uh, wants him out as well. Uh, and you have uh, several unforced errors uh, from the, the general, at least in the eyes of people outside the White House. He suggests that dreamers, uh, many are too lazy to get off the couch and do anything. Uh, and then, of course, came out and talked about uh, the, high in, the high integrity of a man who he knew had been twice accused of spousal abuse. What's going on in there? Questions of judgment and conduct will certainly continue to be raised about this White House and how they handled the Rob Porter situation. But the, the, the whole episode is, is quite revealing about how this White House actually works post Steve Bannon, post Ryan's Priebus. You have General Kelly working closely with Jared Kushner, the president's son-in-law, Ivanka Trump. And at the center of that, that nexus was, of course, Hope Hicks and Rob Porter. And they all thought they, in a sense, were running the West Wing, that they have been the power center. And so when one of the, their own, Rob Porter, this clean-cut Rhodes Scholar, gets embroiled in this kind of situation, a tragic situation for these women and what they have gone through according to their allegations, uh, they were in protect mode. And that's exactly what happened inside of the West Wing over the last week, according to my sources there. And, and Jake Sherman, uh, yet another example of the president who says he hires all the best people actually hiring one person after another that he has to fire. 
I was talking to some people on Capitol Hill yesterday, many of people who have worked in the White House in both the Obama and Bush administrations who said it's simply unfathomable that during a background check this kind of thing would come up, which sources of mine and uh, I think all of ours said it did clearly, and this person would be allowed to be in the White House just to lay things out in a in a different White House, the, uh, an, a chief of staff or a president or a uh, senior staff would say this person might be talented. He might have two degrees from Harvard, and as Bob said, he's a Rhodes Scholar. But we're going to take a pass because of these uh, this history. Although we don't know, we cannot know what happened definitively. The entire story. Two women are telling very similar stories about uh, abuse, abusive behavior, both verbally and physically. So we don't want this to be a distraction. Now, again. I wasn't part of the vetting process, but the FBI sources say had had this information and presented it in some form to people in the West Wing. The, Jonathan Lemire. The timeline here is also pretty revealing. And Porter is someone who in recent months had really been a rising star in the administration and become a close confidant of the chief of staff. And when the DailyMail.com first you know, published a story about these allegations on Tuesday, the move in the White House was to rally around Porter to really try to defend him. Uh, statements were crafted uh, by press aides, including Hope Hicks, who, according to reports, is now dating Rob Porter. And Kelly himself went to bat for him and made a real push to say we should defend him. He urged Porter not to resign, to see this through. Things changed the next day when the photos came out. Kelly himself still went to Porter and said, look, I think you can survive this. But others in the White House sort of gave up there. They, Porter lost support internally when the, those really graphic pictures emerged. And Porter himself decided he wanted, even though he ch ch challenged some of the allegations, Porter himself decided to resign. So, I, I, Heidi, I, you know, I've been exposed over uh, the course of my lifetime to the inner circle of at least three administrations closely. I've never seen anything like this. It seems like, to be kind, Bush leak. But when the president especially promised to hire the very best people, and here we're seeing that from the start there were problems just from the very beginning with the vetting process. And you know what, there's another question out here, and this was kind of skipped over yesterday, but Sarah Sanders was asked what Trump himself knew. Um, and that is an open question, which she kind of shirked. And so as this story goes on, look, this is the first time that, if you want to call it part of the Me Too wave, has touched the White House, it's touched Congress, Hollywood, um, industry, and this is the start of also a discussion about culture. And the question is whether it also kind of brings up Trump's own past and, and, and issues with women. Right. White House officials certainly are anxious about this conversation that, you know, there was that moment where a lot of, of the president's accusers who said that he had sexually harassed them came forward and, you know, the White House simply stuck to the party line of like, deny, 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 this never happened, this never happened. But there was a sense of sensitivity here that like, well, we know this is an issue we're potentially vulnerable on. And then to have these Porter allegations come up, that's part of the reason why others in the White House decided, you know, we can't fight to keep them. Um, I uh, think also we have to look at, um, I'm going to hold my fire on this one and well, move on. One of the critical questions uh, that you know, we've gone around on here this morning is, and Robert, maybe you can help us out by amplifying this if you have an answer to it. There are different levels of security clearances among White House staff. Uh, and to achieve the top rung of security clearances, you have to approve, get, get by hurdles, and the FBI would know, you know, about background checks and what was in it and what was not, and they would inform the chief of staff. So thus, the chief of staff would know that, you know, Rob Porter, you can't come into the situation room when we're talking about this because you don't have that level of security clearance. So, what did John Kelly know, and when did he know it? That is the question, Mike, and I've done some poking around reporting-wise about background checks at the White House, and what may have complicated Rob Porter's uh, background check was that he didn't have a criminal record per se. He had allegations from these women that the White House was certainly aware of, according to some officials there. At the same time, the president himself, I'm told by my sources, has the, the prerogative. He can make the decision to keep someone on if they're in a bit of a limbo uh, situation with regard to their background. 
background check. So what the president knew about Rob Porter's status, what his background check was, what the White House Counsel's Office knew, what John Kelly...